Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here, the GMAT official guide 2024. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Always make sure that this book is in front of you when we are working together. Today is, our lesson. Today is our lesson number 32. We are on page number 97, the very first problem on the page, question number 146, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. I'm going to read it to you, then I'm going to get out of the frame. You do it yourself, and then we'll compare the work uh, that you did against the work that we're going to do it together. It's a very straightforward, very simple problem. Here we go. It says the cost to rent a bus is X dollars. The question simply is, how much more would each person pay if only 10 people take the trip instead of 16. Go ahead, do it yourself. Okay, here we go. So apparently, originally 16 people were planning to take the bus, they rented the... Uh, 16 people were planning to take a trip, they rented a bus, the cost of renting the bus was X dollars, and now 6 people changed their mind and only 10 of them are going. Since there are only 10 going, the cost per person is higher, the cost now is going to be the cost is to be divided by 10 people as opposed to the original plan which was to divide the cost among 16 people and that's how much more they're going to end up paying each person will end up paying the 10 people they're taking you take a common denominator of 160 that's going to give us uh, 16 16x minus 10x it's very straightforward that's a 6x over 160 and we just have to reduce it divide top and bottom by 2 and 3x over 80 that's it, that's, that's our answer. A straightforward, simple problem. Let's look at the next one. In the next one we are told that we are to choose, we are to choose at random four books four books out of ten choose four books at random out of ten we are told to list these books list the books in order in which They were chosen. The question simply is how many different lists, how many different lists are possible? And I'm also going to give you the answer choices here. And we are told that we have six. 40, 210, 5040, and 151,200. Those are the answer choices. Go ahead, do it yourself. Let's see what we can do. The very first thing we need to understand is that because we are told that we have to list the book in order in which they were chosen, in order, obviously this means in this question, order matters. Order very much matters. Which in turn means that this is a permutation problem. This is a permutation problem and not a combination one. In combination, you just combine things, order is of no importance. Here, order very much matters. We have to pick four books. Oh, I shouldn't have raised the answer choices. We have to choose four books 
one, two, three, four. How many different ways can we choose four books? How many different ways can we choose the first book given the fact that we have ten books to choose from? Obviously we can choose ten different ways. After having chosen the first book, how many different ways can we choose the second book? Answer is nine books. How many different books can we choose? The how many different ways can we choose the third book after having chosen the first two books? Now there are only eight books left. And finally, there are only seven ways to choose the last book. And that's about it. That's about it. That's our answer. That's how many different ways we can make the list because we have to put them in order. If the order didn't matter, it would have been a different story. This is a permutation problem. That's all it is. The reason I wanted to leave the answer choices, the reason I wanted, the reason I put the answer choice in the first place is to, I hope that you picked up on a hint here. The hint is that the answer choices are too far apart. When the answer choices are that far apart, you don't have to waste your time figuring out the precise number. Not at all. Ten times, ten times nine, ten times nine, I'm going to pretend is one hundred, and eight times seven is fifty-six. 8 times 10 is 56, even if you said 50, it doesn't matter. We are somewhere around 5,000. The answer is 5,000. We are not going to go from 5,000 to 150,000, and we are not going to go from 5,000 to 200. The answer is that. So you don't have to do precise calculation. Do you understand? It's not necessary. The next one. We are told that we are told that n is a positive integer product of all integers one to n inclusive. We are told. is divisible by 990. The product of all of these integers 1 through n inclusive, which means you have to include the 1 and we have to include the n, the starting point and the end point. Here's the question. The question is, the fact that this product is divisible by 990, the question is, what is the least, least possible value of n, given the fact that the product of these n integers is divisible by 990. And here are the answer choices. 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Go ahead, do it yourself. What is the least possible value of n? So, how many integers do we need, the least, am least amount, the least number of integers, so, so that their product is divisible by 990? So let's begin the show. We're just going to start listing them. 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. And let's divide by 990 and see what happens. And we'll keep on going until we are able to divide evenly into 990. Well, I see a 3 here, I see a 9 here, let's divide by 3. So that becomes 330. Let's write 330. Let's write 330 as 33 times 10. We need a 10 here, we have a 2 here, and eventually we're going to have a 5 here. The 5 and the 2 will take out the 10. Now we have a 33, which is simply a product of 3 and a, 3 and a 11. We don't have any other 3, but next one we have, we, we're going to need a 6 to get rid of this 3. That will get rid of this 3, and that's a 6. But how do we get rid of 11? The only way we can get rid of 11 is to go is to go not to not stop at six to not stop at six but we'll have to go all the way down to eleven and that will take care of the eleven of course if you put a twelve now after that it will this product will still be divisible the product the product of one through twelve will still be divisible divisible by nine ninety but that is not the least possible value of n the least possible value of n the least number of integers we need is eleven and that will take care of it that was the last problem on that, on that, in that column. We'll stop right here. There are three more problems in the next column. We'll do them next time. Okay? Because I don't want the video to be too long. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay? Bye now.